Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to check in with Bulldog Hockey and with us, head coach Bob Daniels. And coach, welcome to the show. Great being here, Rob. I know, obviously, uh, nice to be back at home uh, this past weekend and uh, this coming weekend, a uh, four-game homestand, and got it off uh, with a, a split against St. Lawrence this past weekend. Yeah, we did, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's four weekends in a row now we split, and, uh, you know, and none of them have we won the game in regulation. We, it's always gone to overtime or a shootout in, in the ones we've won, but, you know, this was uh, a tale of two different games. We did not play well on Friday. I, you know, about halfway through the game, we started to show up and in the third period I thought we had a strong third period but we were we were three goals back and and uh, you, you know it's just too much to make up I think we were three back going into the second period and it just it's, it's too much to try to make up that kind of ground um, and you know so disappointed to be honest with you I, it, the first time this year I've been disappointed in our team I, I was just disappointed in how we started and, you know it's, I talked about it after the game on on Friday uh, our morning skate was awful, horrendous. Um, we looked uninterested, and, and uh, you know, I thought we we did the best we could to address that before the game and saying, hey, that, that you know, we got to be ready to roll, and we weren't, and, and consequently, you know, we ended up on the wrong side of things, and we're chasing the game the rest of the night. And then Saturday, well, from start to finish, I thought we played great, and I, their goaltender. I mean, we ended up having to win two to one in overtime, but we. Pretty much grade eight, outchanced them two to one. I mean, we really controlled the game from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, maybe they had they had a pretty good push uh, for about a five minute period in the third period, um, but we were a totally different team and the team that you know I've seen most of the year. The team Friday I didn't recognize. As we go to the highlights, we'll start with Friday's game first, and obviously uh, St. Lawrence came in with a uh, assistant coach that uh, you're very familiar with, and Tommy Hill, uh, who was the captain of the. Frozen Four team back in 2012. Yeah, he, he was the captain and, and, and a great captain, a great leader, and uh, uh, it was good to see him. You know, over the years we've had him and Taylor Nelson back in the rink. Taylor was the goaltender on that team. You know, Trevor Large, who's the head coach at Canisius. So I always love seeing our, our past players that have gone on and now coaching collegiately as well. How much different does it make it uh, taking on a team like St. Lawrence uh, as we see here in the first period? Uh, team that you don't see a whole lot of uh, over the course of the season. I, you know what, it, it does make a difference in that we don't really, we watched some film on them and had, had a pretty good idea how they play. I really like it. These are the kind of series I enjoy because we knew they'd be good. They knew they'd test us. Uh, they would test us. And But it, it's new. It's a different opponent. And that's awesome. And, uh, you know, next year we're going to return the favor. We're going to go back to their rink and, and play two there. Um, and, uh, you know, because even our non-conference schedule generally, we know we're going to play Western for two. We know we're going to play Miami for two. We know we'll be in the GLI. So when we get an opportunity to face somebody that we don't normally see, I, I think we all kind of enjoy it. It gives you a, a, a way to kind of maybe measure ourselves against some of the other conferences around the country. Obviously, they took a 3 to nothing lead here, and we'll see uh, the first Bulldog goal coming up uh, here as Antonio Venuto gets it right in front of the net. Yeah, boy, is he playing well. I think he has six goals now on the season. Him and Picarni uh, and, and Branchow, they give us that senior leadership we're looking for. This is the goal that really hurt because we were playing better. We had finally warmed to the task, and then they came down. We scored to make it 3-1. They came right down and scored to make it 4-1, and then here they make it 5-1. And, you know, the game's over at this point. You know, we're, we're just going to try to play hard for the next day, and that's the right thing to do for the fans. So you'll see, you know, we, we continue to apply some pressure. We do score a goal here. But, you know, we're, we're basically playing, you know, to try to get our, our heads right for the next day. Paul, on Friday night, any changes that maybe uh, went into going into that second night on Saturday? Well, the most important thing, I think, was just mindset. Like, I really did. We, we, you know, we showed the guys some film, but when you play that poorly for as long as we did, you know, it's not like a real X's and O's type thing. But we did make some lineup adjustments, uh, got some different guys in there. We played Trevor Tallin, uh freshman defenseman. Uh, we got Kane Galden two nights in a row, Austin uh, McCarthy, and... You know, so we got some different guys, and now they did score a quick goal on a blown coverage on a faceoff, but we're able to tie it up. I, I, you know what, it had a whole different feel, though. I knew right from the start we were going to be better, and I wasn't too worried when they scored. Um, and the funny thing is, now this, this game will go 1-1 into overtime, and, and it wasn't like there wasn't a lot of chances. It just the goaltending at both ends was really strong. You know, um, 
I don't think we gave them a, a ton of chances realistically. I think in the second period we may have only given up like three shots on net. Um, the team played just that much better on, on Saturday. This is one of those games where uh, both teams were very disciplined as well. Not a whole lot of penalties called in this contest. No, there, there wasn't. And I think it was a combination because it was a physical series. It, it pretty much any play around the net, it ends up pretty physical. You'll see here. I mean, it's all, it was heavy hitting. Um, but for the most part, you know, everybody stayed within the rule book. And uh, that's one thing we really tried to do this year. And I think we're in the top 10 teams, the least penalized minutes of the country. And we'd like to keep it that way. How uh, much uh, does it uh, impact the guys, I guess, when you when you have an opportunity to score and just not able to put one in the net? Well, you know, I, I think we were getting frustrated. We had so many good looks. Um, you'll see here, I think uh, the next highlight will be us in the third period. And we get like two or three good looks on the very first shift. And it, it, it is frustrating. You worry as a coach because they hadn't really been in our in the rink hardly at all. So you can see we get one good chance there, another a good follow-up. Um, but their goaltender is 6'5", so even when he's a little out of position, he, the puck seems to find him. Obviously, uh, here as we play in this third period, you had some opportunities and uh, certainly defensively did a nice job against uh, them and really limiting their chances. We really did. You can see uh, on the score bug there at this point, the shots were 28-16 for us. And it was pretty, really in my opinion, pretty one-sided with the exception of a few minutes here in the third period that I thought St. Lawrence had a good push. Here uh, we'll see the Bulldogs get the, the winner in overtime. Antonio Benuto again with uh, another goal here as uh, you get the uh, win in overtime, uh, which you guys have uh, kind of been, been accustomed to here this season. Wow, I know. We've been living on the edge here, and we're 4-0 in overtime. It's 6-0 if you go back to last year where we played Bowling Green uh, overtime both games of the playoffs. So I was thinking about that today. We're, we're starting to think we're bulletproof in overtime, and I've been around long enough to know that's not true. I would like to see us start winning these games though in regulation, I really would. Um, and we need to because in league when you win these games in, in uh, overtime, you only get two points and the other team gets a point for getting into overtime. So, you know, for us to move up the standings, we're gonna need to get these, you know, once we're back in conference into regulation wins. But I was real proud of the guys, as disappointed as I was Friday and I was very disappointed. I was that proud of the guys on Saturday for bouncing back and really, playing what I thought a great game start to finish. Obviously, uh, speaking of the conference this week, back in conference play against Minnesota State, uh, which uh, has a new uh, coaching staff, but obviously a program that's got a lot of tradition. Yeah, you know, new coaching staff, but it looks like they picked up right where the old coaching staff uh, left. You know, um, it, it, they got a good team, great tradition, as you say. And the Saturday game um, has been moved from 6 to 7 o'clock. So now both Friday and Saturday will be at 7, and, and – you know, for a good reason, there are football teams playing, and uh, you know, in order for us to get that TV truck from the football <laughs> game to the hockey game, uh, that extra hour is beneficial. Obviously, a big series this weekend, and Coach, best of luck. Uh, thanks for the time, and uh, looking forward to watching the Bulldogs host Minnesota State this weekend. Thanks, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports update right after this.